Welcome to EWTN's Religious Catalog. EWTN's founders, our beloved Mother Angelica, first brought this program into the homes of EWTN viewers in 1996. Since then, Religious Catalog has offered thousands of Catholic products, including good books, beautiful religious art, rosaries and medals, statues of Our Lord, Our Lady, the saints, and crucifixes, all designed to enrich our spiritual lives. Religious Catalog is also your source for many of the favorite programs seen here on EWTN, including exclusive series, specials, live shows, and feature films. I hope you have a blessed reminder of the love of Jesus in your house and in your heart. Hello everyone, I'm Johnette Benkovic and welcome to EWTN's Religious Catalog program. It's always a pleasure to be here with you as we do Religious Catalog and always a pleasure to be with Debbie Cowden, who is my beautiful, beautiful partner here today. Debbie, here we are and we're making our way through this glorious month of Our Blessed Lady and so many marvelous things yet to share with everyone. Absolutely. I'm really excited to talk about these items today, partially because the Trinity is such an important part of our faith, but also because we'll be talking a little bit about praying for the souls in purgatory, which is something that's very dear to me. Yes, absolutely. But first, did you know that the Solemnity of the Most Holy Trinity is on May 22nd? The Catechism of the Catholic Church tells us this. The mystery of the Most Holy Trinity is the central mystery of Christian faith and life. It is the mystery of God in Himself. Today, we have several items that will remind us of the Holy Trinity, and we're going to begin, as I promised, with these beautiful, beautiful crucifixes. Let me hold this one up for you. I think that this is absolutely gorgeous, and I'm looking forward to uh, getting one of these for my own home. This is called the Holy Trinity Crucifix, and this beautiful crucifix depicts the Trinity present at the crucifixion. God the Father is shown holding the beam to which God the Son is nailed while God, the Holy Spirit, hovers above in the form of a dove. The beam held by the Father is painted gold, while the rest of the cross is painted to look like wood with majestic gold finials on each end. It measures 10 inches high. The reason why I like this crucifix so much is because it really does present to us the fact that wherever Jesus is, so is the Father and so is the Holy Spirit. The Trinitarian life is always together. And even at this moment of our Lord's crucifixion, uh, the God the Father and the Holy Spirit were present. And I love the, the elegance with which this particular crucifix is manufactured. And I think it's a very dressy uh, crucifix, if you will, and yet one in its simplicity that leads us deeply into that beautiful, beautiful mystery. We also have another beautiful Trinity crucifix, especially if you are one who likes wood and silver together. This is absolutely exquisite. It is a walnut crucifix. It features God the Father depicted in pewter at the top, God the Son, Jesus, crucified, and God the Holy Spirit in the form of a dove just above Jesus' head. At the foot of the cross is a pewter medallion of a host and chalice representing the Eucharist. And on either side of our Lord is an adoring angel, also depicted in pewter. It measures 12 inches high. Now, this is one of those crucifixes that will never go out of style because it's so traditional in its presentation. The pewter detail uh, on this cross is absolutely exquisite. And I think that it's going to be something that could be passed on to the family as a treasured heirloom piece. It's really quite lovely. As we continue to contemplate the reality depicted on these two crucifixes on the Holy Trinity, it's good for us to learn more about this Trinity of Persons. And we can do that in this beautiful book, The Trinity, How Not to Be a Heretic. Stephen Bullivan explains how the earliest Christians came to be convinced of the doctrine of the Trinity in three simple, deeply scriptural convictions. Number one, there is only one God. Number two, 
Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are all God. And number three, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are not the same. Now, the purpose of this book is to give Christians a better understanding of the Trinity so that they can help other Christians and non-Christians to know and understand the mystery of the Trinity better as well as themselves. We also have another beautiful way to uh, help us to understand the Trinity better, but also a way in which we can formulate our life of prayer around this great mystery of the Blessed Trinity. And this is a gorgeous book. It's called The Blessed Trinity Book of Catholic Prayers. You notice the, the elegant way in which it's manufactured, the, the leather cover and also the gilted edges. This is a collection of Catholic prayers, devotions, and teachings from approved sources. The print is 12 point font, which is very good because it makes it easy to read. And it also has red and blue headings and several beautiful black and white illustrations. It has a sewn binding, a soft imitation leather cover with, as I mentioned, the gold foil stamped lettering and gilded pages. And it comes with three page markers. This is a book that you will have throughout the course of your life and one that you will want to pass on to your children because it certainly helps for us to pray to the Holy Trinity and to be involved in this great gift that is ours through the grace that comes to us via the Trinity of persons who is our God. You know, Jonna, as, as we've been doing the Religious Catalog episodes, I can't help but think, I need to read this book, I need to read this book, I need to watch <laughs> this DVD, and then I'm thinking, I don't have time to read all of these. But, but then you stop and you think, how much time do I spend watching TV or watching movies or uh, scrolling through social media? How much time do I spend wasting doing really idle, uh, meaningless things when I could be spending my time uh, growing deeper in prayer, growing closer to the saints? Um, so I really want us to think about how we can be spending our time wisely uh, while we're growing closer to God. And, and so I have some items that I think will help with that. Um, if you're going to be spending time reading, you will probably need a bookmark. And this is a beautiful, beautiful bookmark. It's the Old Testament Trinity Tapestry Bookmark. And like I said, this is a beautiful bookmark. And it's made with richly colored and shimmering gold threads. The pattern is on the front side only which really I think is the only side you need of a bookmark, uh, and the back is unfinished. Uh, the bookmark measures two inches wide by nine inches long. It will fit beautifully in your Bible, in your book about the Trinity, how not to be a heretic, um, in some of these other books that we'll show you today. Um, and what a, what a great reminder that of the transcendence of, of the Trinity and, and how our God is glorious and majestic. I noticed that it features a depiction of, of that uh, beautiful icon that is the Trinity of Persons, mm -hmm. and, and that is embroidered on there, and I think that it's just really exquisitely done. I'm a big fan of this. I am too. I and like it. Next I like we party have, things. Yes, me too. Next we have the Mystery of the Trinity DVD. Is the Holy Trinity an unfathomable mystery whose depths we will never understand? Well, on this DVD, Father Benedict Groeschel urges us to contemplate the Godhead this side of heaven as he prayerfully unveils for us God's mercy and holiness, the mysteries of salvation, and the beauty of worship. Wow. These beliefs unite us to the triune source of all knowledge and love. The running time is six and a half hours, and you don't have to sit and watch all of this at once. You can watch one episode at a time, even if you can devote you know, 20, 30 minutes of your day to learning more about the great mystery of the Trinity. And the Feast of Corpus Christi is Sunday, May 29th, also my due date. <laughs> the Holy Eucharist is the most wonderful gift that God gives us on earth. And Blessed Mother Teresa said, if I can give you any advice, I beg you to get closer to the Eucharist and to Jesus. We must pray to Jesus to give us that tenderness of the Eucharist. So here are several items that will remind us of our dear Eucharistic Lord. First is Christ the High Priest icon. And in John chapter 6, verse 51, Jesus said, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. 
This image of Jesus presents our Savior as the High Priest, eternally offering Himself through the Holy Eucharist. And the icon measures four and a half inches by six inches. So it'll fit in many different places. It'll hang up on the wall. You can put it on a stand. Beautiful reminder of Jesus and His real presence in the Eucharist. And this is the source and summit of our faith. This is what we should be fixing our eyes on is the Holy Eucharist. So this is something that you'll want to bring into your home. And the next item I have is off to my left. It is the Holy Communion Rosary. Now this beautiful rosary by Gorelli features six millimeter bohemian glass beads with an antiqued pearl effect, an angels and Eucharistic Jesus centerpiece. Isn't this just a beautiful, beautiful centerpiece? And a crucifix with hand enameled inserts. And the Monstrance Crucifix was inspired by the real presence of Jesus in the Most Holy Eucharist and by the Gospel passage, I am with you always, from Matthew 28, verse 20. And this rosary has a gold-plated finish and is capped. Uh, the Our Father beads are capped, which adds an extra little bit of elegance you to know, it. And if I may comment on it, you know, I'm looking at this and looking at how beautiful it is, and I'm thinking that so many young children are making their first Holy Communions in the month of May, and wouldn't this be a beautiful gift for a child on his or her first Communion Day? It would be. What a, what a wonderful reminder of the Eucharist and the, the significance mm -hmm. of receiving that sacrament. And so we should be encouraging uh, young children to not only develop a devotion to the rosary and also to frequent reception of yes. the Eucharist too. And beautiful also for a bride. June is the month of weddings and I can just see that as a beautiful gift to give to a young bride. I agree. Really a beautiful thing. Well, we're talking about our Lord and His great gift to us in the Blessed Sacrament. And we have a beautiful Blessed Sacrament medal we also want to offer you. You know, wearing religious jewelry, I think, uh, is, is such a very important thing to do. For one reason, it becomes a conversation starter so we can share about the truths of the faith with others. But in another way, and Debbie, you made reference to this uh, uh, it, earlier in, in some of the uh, broadcasts this month for Religious Catalog. You talked about the fact that it reminds us that we're a witness to the faith. So there's a, a certain type of, of um, uh, influence that it has on us in terms of, of how it is that we're living our lives and the type of deliberation that we put into our actions. And third of all, when they're blessed, what do they do? They become for us sacramentals that are capable of bringing us grace. So this beautiful Blessed Sacrament medal is the perfect keepsake for First Holy Communion, but it is also a great reminder for any Catholic. It is made of sterling silver, as you can see, and it depicts the Holy Eucharist with a chalice surmounted by a cross and surrounded by wheat and great leaves. It measures three quarter inches and comes on an 18 inch stainless chain. We also have the chaplet of the most precious blood, and this is a lovely chaplet. And let me hold this up for you. The chaplet is composed of 33 beads in memory of the 33 years of Jesus' life on earth. The Our Father prayer is recited 33 times in honor of the 33 years the precious blood flowed in the veins of Jesus before it was all poured out on the cross for our salvation. The beads are separated into seven sections that correspond with seven times that Jesus shed his precious blood at the circumcision, his agony in the garden, the scourging, the crowning with thorns, carrying the cross, the crucifixion, and finally, the piercing of his side. The beads are red faceted glass with a silver plated center and crucifix. This is a lovely way in which we can enter more deeply into the treasure that is ours through the sacred blood of our Lord shed for our salvation. And it comes with an explanatory card to help you to pray this and to pray it well. Next, we have this. Now, we've shown you one prayer manual. Here is another prayer manual. You can never have enough prayer manuals. I love this. It's the Manual for Eucharistic Adoration. Blessed Mother Teresa once said, the time you spend with Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament is the best time you will spend on earth. Mother Angelica's nuns, the poor clares of perpetual adoration, devote their whole lives to prayer and thanksgiving at the feet of Jesus 
in the most blessed sacrament. And you know, they tuck you into their prayers. So it is fitting that the poor Clares would compile this magnificent manual for Eucharistic adoration to teach us about this beautiful practice and to assist and enrich our time spent in the presence of our Eucharistic King. It is bound in a soft, flexible cover with gilded pages and a ribbon place marker it's a beautiful way in which we can enter into that prayer that the poor clairs of the perpetual adoration are always making before the Eucharistic presence of our Lord. What's to say they didn't have you in mind when they were compiling these? They certainly did because they've been praying for you. We also have a book written by Scott Hahn. Now you know Scott Hahn's books are just treasures of theological richness, richness written in such a way that we can enter into uh, the very concepts that he's presenting. And this book is no different. Consuming the Word, the New Testament, and the Eucharist in the early church. Now, long before the New Testament was a document, it was a sacrament. Jesus called the Eucharist by the name that Christians subsequently gave to the latter books of the Holy Bible. It was the New Covenant, the New Testament, in his blood. Christians later extended the phrase to cover the books produced by the apostles and their companions. They did so because these were the books that could be read at Mass. Dr. Hahn examines some of the Christianity's most basic terms to discover what they meant to the sacred authors. It is a book that you need to have so that you can understand more deeply the mystery that is being presented to you. It's unfathomable, but we can enter a little bit at a time into the great treasure that is ours through that mystery. We also have a DVD for you, and this is so beautifully packaged, honestly, it's just exquisite. It's a Eucharistic DVD. Father Barron offers inspiring insights into the mystery of Christ's presence in our lives and the centrality of the Eucharist as an important part of that presence. So many believers do not understand the mystery of the Eucharist, which Vatican II said is the source and summit of the Christian life. This fresh look at the Eucharist brings to light its reality as sacred meal, the sacrifice necessary for your communion with God, and the real presence of Christ. The running time is one hour and 17 minutes. The packaging is book-like. It opens up and you see that the DVD is inside. So this tucks neatly onto your bookcase at home. I am very, very excited about these items, Janet, because it just reminds me of how rich our Catholic faith is. I'm thinking in particular of consuming the Word because when I read Scott Hahn's books, I just sit there thinking, wow, wow, wow. You're never going to look at the Bible the same way because he, he ties in the Old and New Testament yes. and talks about uh, the covenant relationship that God has with His people. I'm talking a little bit faster because I'm really, really excited about it. I'm probably going to get this book from my <laughs> husband. It's a beautiful one to have, and you get to read it too if you get it from I your do. husband. I Give do. it as a gift, and then you can make use of the gift too. Of course, of course, and we have we have more rich traditions in our faith, and one of those um, is praying for the holy souls in purgatory. So we're going to talk about some of those um, items that we have. Well, here's a book that's featured this week on EWTN's bookmark. It, this is St. Faustina's Prayer Book for Holy Souls. Now, in God's perfect timing, the release of author Susan Tassoni's latest book on behalf of the Holy Souls in Purgatory just happens to fall right in the middle of Pope Francis's Year of Extraordinary Jubilee Mercy. So St. Faustina, the Apostle of Divine Mercy, teaches us the importance of praying for the souls in purgatory with devotions, meditations, novenas, special prayers, and holy wisdom she received directly from our Lord. Don't forget to pray for the holy souls in purgatory, your loved ones who have passed away, family and friends, those who have no one else to pray for them. This book is going to help you do that. You'll be richly blessed for it. And here are two other popular books also written by Susan Tassoni. First, we have Day by Day for the Holy Souls in Purgatory. Again, don't forget to pray for the Holy Souls in Purgatory. Venerable Solomonist Casey said, If we, by our prayers and sacrifices, freed a soul from purgatory, we would then have another intercessor for us in heaven. Hmm. Every day we have another opportunity to pray for the Holy Souls in Purgatory. And Susan Tassoni is giving you a unique tool to do that. And so this is a collection of 365 reflections, and it includes prayers, teachings about purgatory, real-life stories, 
Susan's own wisdom, meditations, quotes from the saints, and more. So this is going to be a guide that's going to be able to walk with you every day of the year. If I may comment on that, mm -hmm. Debbie, I want to comment on that book because that book was very meaningful to me after I lost my son. Mm -hmm. And it was one that gave me great strength and great hope during that time of grieving. And there's a beautiful quote in there by St. John 23rd that says, our loved ones are not separated from us, only invisible to us, which I have quoted dozens of times and shared with numbers of mothers who have lost children. I simply want to say that is a treasure of a book, as are all of Susan's books. They're all marvelous. Thank you for sharing that, You're Jeanette. welcome. I have one more book, Praying with the Saints for the Holy Souls. Throughout the ages, the devotions, prayers, and practices of the communion of saints have been offered up on behalf of the souls in purgatory, also known as the church suffering. The saints' ardent desire to intercede for the suffering souls in purgatory prompted them to pray ceaselessly for their eternal rest. And so in this inspiring book, Susan Tassoni shows how we can join in the saints and their powerful prayers in this holy act of charity, thereby attaining spiritual gifts for the souls that cry out to us for relief and who will certainly not forget to return the favor for us. Um, and, and like we said, when you, when you pray for a soul in purgatory and, and they make it into heaven, just think we have one more intercessor praying for us when we need it most too. So let's remember to pray for our loved ones when they die, but also for the strangers, for souls who have no one else to pray for them. When you see a news story about someone who has died or you see an obituary, say a prayer for his or her soul. You might be the only one to pray for that person. Yes, it's very true. And it reminds us of the fact of the great mystery of the communion of saints. And the holy souls can no longer pray for themselves, but they can pray for us. Mm -hmm. So as we're interceding for them, they can intercede for us. And since they're short of salvation, we know they're all going to be saints someday, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so we are going to have that intercessor in heaven. So you'll want to pick up Susan Tassoni's books as well as all of the items that we have here for you today by going to EWTNRC.com. Now it is our pleasure to give you the information so that you can order these beautiful presentations that we have seen today. The Holy Trinity Crucifix 65966 is $26.50. The Walnut Trinity Crucifix, an heirloom piece, I believe, is item number 2006E, and it is $68. The Trinity, How Not to Be a Heretic, that book that you should have, is 49339, and it sells for $18. The Blessed Trinity Book of Catholic Prayers, item number 2333, is $19. The Old Testament Trinity Tapestry Bookmark is item number TBM45. It is $3. The Mystery of the Trinity DVD, item number HDMT, is $25. Christ, the High Priest Icon, item number 902MD, is $18. Holy Communion Gold-Plated Rosary is item number 40157, and it is $44. The Blessed Sacrament Medal in Sterling Silver is item number 875SS, and that is $42. Next, we have the Chaplet of the Most Precious Blood, item number 209C, available for $10. The Manual for Eucharistic Adoration is item number 2419 and is $30. And Consuming the Word by Scott Hahn is item number 90817 for $22. The Eucharist DVD is item number 211D for $30. And featured this week on EWTN Bookmark, we have St. Faustina's Prayer Book for Holy Souls by Susan Tassoni. It's item number T1759, and that's $16. And other popular books by Susan Tassoni include Day by Day for the Holy Souls in Purgatory, item number T1577 for $17, and Praying with the Saints for the Holy Souls, 
item number T833 for $10. To place your order, please visit EWTNRC.com. We accept Visa, MasterCard, Discover, and American Express. It's safe and secure 24 hours per day, seven days per week. Again, that's EWTNRC.com, or you can call 1-800-854-6316. Don't forget to visit and like us on Facebook and let us know what you've enjoyed seeing today. This show is here to help you to become holy, to help your family to become stronger in union with God and union with each other. I want to feed your family and you with beautiful books, beautiful articles, the saints, crucifixes, just something of God for your living room, for your kitchen, in your car, wherever. I hope and pray that this program, this catalog program, will help us to be family. First God's family, your family. And that's what this network is all about, family. Thank you.